Okay, we're doing this again, ladies and gentlemen. Are you not entertained? Because now we have the sequel you've all been waiting for. It's been three months since the last bakery video. I know a lot of you are just sitting around your homes in the fetal position. Um, just like, man, when is Tekken going to do the next One Piece best bakery video? Is there even going to be another bakery video? Or was it like a one-hit wonder sort of situation? Do not worry there is a sequel and i have a surprise for everybody this is not even the last video all right this is at least going to be a trilogy um because i don't know if you guys knew this but there's a lot of characters in one piece and we absolutely will not stop until every single one piece character regardless of their canon or non-canon status regardless of their relevance in the story is ranked based on their ability to run a damn bakery that is my promise to you, the nation. I feel like I'm giving an election speech right now. If you elect me as president, I will make sure that everybody in this country is ranked based on their baking ability. <laughs> okay? Holy crap. All right. So we have... 56 more characters from the One Piece world that is going that are going to be added to the greatest tier list that ever did tier list in the history of all tier lists, all right? So, uh, let's just go through this again really quick. You could go back and watch the first video. I'll put a card up in the other corner because I'm, I'm stuck in this corner. Hold on, let me move myself over here. All right, I'm a little bit behind the tier list right now, but it's like right over here in this area will be the card. Okay, so I'm gonna move that back over here now. Okay, also you can see Barry down there. He has a nice little cup of tea and some cookies. Uh, he's enjoying himself. Also, Barry's back here. I have my book of pie. I have a rolling pin, you know, so we'll be good. Okay. So, let's just go through the tier list really quick, and if you want a full explanation, you could go back to the original video. Alright, so let's just start from top to bottom here. Uh, first of all, we have the very best category, alright? This is the category literally meant for only one individual, and so far, in the first round, it was just Sanji that took away the cake. You know, he had the cake because he won the very best like no one ever was. You can't have more than one person as the very best. That's why they're the very best. Now, it is feasible that another character could dethrone Sanji, but if that were to happen, Sanji would go down to the best category, which is right next to Boa, which would make him pretty happy, but then the, the new person would be the very best, okay? So that's the situation there. And then uh, the other categories are ranked more or less, now keep in mind, they're not just on their baking ability, it's on their ability to run a bakery. So like, for example, in the best category, uh, if you didn't see the first episode, we have Drake in there, and, and many people might be thinking, why is Diaz Drake in such a high category, uh, Leo as well. And the reason for that is I feel like with Drake, you know, his his bakery would be like based on uh, like dinosaurs. Like he would have a dinosaur, like uh, Jurassic Park themed bakery. And I feel like that would be really, really popular. Leo and the Tontadas are basically like the Keebler elves. So, you know, it's it, it, like literally going to a bakery run by the Keebler elves. Like that would be great. Like you walk in and it's like a forest and everything. So the aesthetic and the interior design and the way that you treat your fellow uh, bakers and everything like that, that's a big deal right there. Absolutely. So uh, the best is like the best category. Five out of five stars on Yelp. You know, you would recommend it to all of your friends of like, oh my god, this is the greatest bakery I've ever been to in my entire life. Go check them out, right? Then we have Amazing, which is still really high. It's still five stars on Yelp. It's still great, but it's like, the difference between the best and Amazing is like, you know, when you ask somebody about a bakery that's the best, they would freak out. At least I would. I'd be like, oh my god, it's the greatest bakery ever. You have to go, you know? If it's an amazing bakery, they'll still give you a glowing review of it, but it's going to be a little bit more reserved, you know? It's going to be like, Oh yeah, it's dude, you got to try out that uh that the pastries there. You got to try out the cream puffs, the donuts, the eclairs. Oh my god, they're like some of the best I've ever had in my life, okay? So then we get to really good, which is dialed back even further. Maybe this would be like 4 stars on Yelp, okay? This one would be like, yeah, man, I I tried that bakery out last week, you know, Buggy the Clown's bakery that just opened. Really solid stuff, really good uh, you know, really good baked goods and 
everything. But you're not going to go over the top with it. You've had better baked goods, but pretty, pretty damn solid, you know? Then we get j just to good, you know, good bakery, you know, still good, still fine. Three to four stars on Yelp, I guess. And you're just like, yeah, yeah, I, I had, um, I had some brownies there last week. I bought some brownies or I got a, I got a cake for a birthday party there last week. And it was, uh, it was pretty good. It's pretty good. I love how Beijing's there. He basically runs the mafia in the back room of his bakery, but yeah. Uh, then we just have eh. And we have eh, and it's like if you ask somebody about this, this is like two stars on Yelp now territory. It's like, how was that bakery? It'd be like, eh, I mean, like, it was just kind of, it was just kind of eh, man. I don't know what to tell you. Like, you know, the cookies were like a little bit crumbly, but they tasted okay. Eh, that's the best way I can describe it. And then we have garbage, which this is an active one star on Yelp. This is like you're now telling people to avoid this bakery. You're like, how was that bakery? How was Luffy's bakery? And be like, I don't even think that dude ever made a, a single cookie in his life. I don't even think if he was using like the, he goes and buys the Betty Crocker stuff from the store, he could make a cake. Even with like three instructions on the box, I don't think he could do a good job with that. You know, so that's like you're actively telling people to avoid this place. And then unholy, this goes beyond Yelp. Yelp reviews. You know, if there was like a negative rain ranking on uh, uh, Yelp reviews and stuff, that's what you would use for this. Like negative five, literally uneatable, li literally inedible, I almost died, you know, or I did die. In the case with some of these guys like Magellan, Magellans might actually kill you. So you know what I mean? Like that's, that's the unholy category, only reserved for the worst of the worst. Now, before we get into it properly, I just need to move I was looking at this, and I was honestly happy with the way most of these characters ended up, but the one character that a lot of people in the last video commented about, like, they should have been higher up on the list, and I did think about it, and I do agree with you 100%, and I apologize, is Kizaru. Kizaru is going up in the amazing category, and that's the simple reason, as everyone mentioned, Kizaru would be making the best damn pot brownies this side of whatever region you live in. You know what I mean? Like, this side of that river, this side of whatever mountain range you're close to, okay? Kizaru's pot brownies would be the best, okay? So, yeah, I gotta move him up to the amazing category. I don't know why he was down there and eh, but I'm pretty happy with where everybody else ended up for various reasons. If you want a little bit more detail on why I put a character in a specific place, once again, check out the last video. But we got to get moving because we've already, we're already seven minutes into this and we already have, we still have 56 characters to go through. The last video was like two and a half hours long. By the way, before that, I, I want to thank everybody, by the way. That bakery video, out of all the little silly videos I make on the side, like the tree video or the ice cream video, they don't get that many crazy views because it's like a video about trees like who gives a shit but like the last bakery video i made it has like a quarter of a million views and i wanted to thank everybody for that because you all appreciate how much bakeries matter in the one piece world yes okay so let's begin with probably the biggest mistake i made on the last video and that was not including kata curry how did i not i mean there's a lot of characters in one piece i get it but like how did i miss kata curry in the last one? Oh my god and so that's why he's the thumbnail for this one and kata curry yes i i apologize but of course Kata Curry is the donut man. He is the master of all things donut um even more of a master than akainu think of a think of about that for a little moment to see where that joke was going but anyway yes so kata curry would have I think one of, like, honestly, I mean, Big Mom is on here as sort of like a conglomerate, like, you know, she's like Mom from Futurama, like a big business kind of like baked goods sort of situation. Kata Curry, he doesn't just like donuts, okay? He would be invested 100% in his job, okay? In fact, in the story of One Piece, if you told Kata Curry he doesn't have to be a pirate anymore, he doesn't have to be a sweet commander, he doesn't have to be a minister, he can just go and start his own bakery somewhere, I think Kata Curry would be elated. I think he would find his best self if he could go and just do that, right? He would be in love with it every day. He would wake up at 4 o'clock in the damn morning every single day, get 
into the bakery before anybody else, and he would gladly sing a song of merriment as he's making all of his donuts. Like, I love donuts, yummy, yummy, yummy. I love donuts in my tummy. I love donuts. He would be so damn happy. And then the first person that walks into his bakery at like 8 a.m. when they open up, first person walks in, maybe it's just like a little kid on his way to school, and he's like, I would like a donut, please. And then Kata Curry would be like, oh, yes, absolutely. The greatest donut to fresh out of the oven. And then the kid would eat the donut, and Kata Curry would be like, yeah. You know, he'd just be like so happy that people are enjoying his donuts and like the sprinkles, and he's always trying out new recipes. Like, Kata Curry has to be in the best category, right? Like, we're all in agreement here, okay? The dude, I mean, now, he is made of mochi, so he could use his mochi to make donuts, like specialty mochi donuts, but he just loves donuts in general, like any type of donuts, you know what I mean? So, you know, everything. Although, does he sell donut holes, or would he find that, like, sacrilegious? You know, the little part of the donut you pop out, and then you have that as, like, a separate baked good, a separate pastry? I'm not really sure if, if he's on... On the um, on board with that, but like with regular donuts, man, I've seen some really cool images of like um, gourmet donut like restaurants and bakeries where it's not just like a Dunkin' Donuts or some gas station donut. No, it's like genuine like gourmet bakers that make some of the best damn donuts you've ever seen in your life. Um, there was a donut place around here that actually closed a few years ago. It was called Peace Love and Little Donuts, and they just sold these little tiny donuts, and you get like sixteen in a box, and it would just be like, oh my god, they're like peak on some of them sprinkles like some of the best damn donuts you've ever seen in your life and um yeah so that would that would be that would be Kata curry's place and genuinely he would love his job he would love every little piece of it he would wake up hours before everybody else to open and clean up the store and he would be there hours after everyone left he would treat his employees very fairly very well um yeah Kata curry man he's and he would use his devil fruit to like you know make the dough and everything because he has like multiple arms with his mochi mochi no me and everything he would he would just be a master so yeah Kata curry i apologize for not putting you on the last list. Um, there's a lot of characters, even on this one, that I had to leave out. Um, like Marco. I just realized Marco's not on here, and that sucks. So, you know, there will be a third part of this. You know, Roger is another one. Roger, the King of the Pirates, isn't even on here. Okay, but anyway. Um, so, Kata Curry was there first because I had to talk about him. Everybody else on here is um, in uh, alphabetical order. So, with that being said, we're now moving on to Absalom who's uh, actually dead right now in the context of the story. But assuming, okay, he's a corpse, so I'm assuming... I'm assuming garbage tier, right? Um, well, actually, I don't know. He might stay there. So Absalom doesn't really have any baking ability whatsoever. Um, his thing was uh, he would, you know, go invisible and, like, you know, creep on Nami in the bath and everything. So that's not cool. So there's probably some weird shit going on in his bakery like that. So that's that's not going to be cool. I feel like if we're just going with Absalom as he was, like, in the Thriller Bark arc, so he still has the Sube Sube Nomi, he still has the invisibility fruit and everything like that. Um, if anybody complained about his bakery, he would probably just turn invisible, you know, and just, like, like sneak out the back and let the employees take the, the fall for it. Um, I, I don't think he would be a great baker. Actually, you know what? He's more of an investigative journalist. I don't really think that would really translate to baking skills all that well. And like I said, he's just kind of a creep so I'm just gonna leave him on the garbage tier I think that's actually appropriate for Absalom absolutely uh, next up is uh, Ashura Doji Ashura Doji I'll tell you what about Ashura Doji he would make explosive donuts guys I mean the most bombastic donuts like they were like dynamite I tell you absolutely <laughs> okay so I mean like Ashura Doji He's a mountain bandit, and then he was working for Odin. So he probably did learn a little bit about, like, cooking and stuff. Because remember, all of the scabbards... All the scabbards are on this list, by the way. But all the scabbards would... You know, they would, like, study about how to be a proper follower, a proper uh, subject or vassal of a daimyo, you know? I imagine there's probably some cooking skills in there a little bit. Um, but I don't think Ashura Doji is, like, an expert. Actually, we did see him cooking... Not cooking, but... During the flashback with Odin, we saw him killing a snake, and then he cut the head off of the snake and then drained the blood of the snake into sake, which he then drank. So, you know, that's not really baking, though. That's just kind of like drinking. So, yeah. Um, honestly, I think Ashura Doji would just go into, like, eh, category. I, I really don't see... I mean, there might be, like, 
a Japanese cherry blossom sort of aesthetic to the bakery. Like you walk in and there's like cherry blossoms everywhere because his hair is a cherry blossom tree. And the uh, the mountain bandits are based on Atama Mountain, which is like head mountain. So, you know, like aesthetic alone. But I, I just don't think his baking abilities are really going to be anything to write home about, honestly. So I, I'm going to just leave Ashura Doji and eh. You know, like you go to a place and be like, yeah, I mean, like it looks cool, but the baked goods just kind of like. Eh. And I don't even think he could decorate it all that well. I mean, he would do his best, but it would just be like if someone that with no painting skills painted a cherry blossom tree. Like it would look like a it would look like an elementary school student did it, and it would just be like, all right, he's trying, but I just think it's eh. Okay, next up is Mr. Four. Uh, I think uh, Babe is his real name uh, after Babe Ruth because he uses a baseball bat. You know, so Mr. Four, fun fact, his dream profession that he wanted to do his whole life that was revealed in Mrs. Golden Week's Meet Baroque cover series was he wanted to be a... Um, he wanted to be a pizza delivery man, not a person that makes the pizzas, which would classify as a bakery. Because technically speaking, I was looking into a whole list of what's con what constitutes baked goods. I mean, with pizza, you are making the dough of the crust of the pizza. Pizza crust, I guess, is b a baked good. I don't know if you would classify a pizza with the sauce and the pepperoni and the onions and everything as a baked good. But the dough certainly is. You need to know how to make dough. So, but here's the thing. He did not want to be a pizza, a pizza chef. He wanted to be a pizza delivery boy. Like, that was his literal dream job, which is really kind of sad, but also sort of endearing. Like, okay, this is what he wanted to do with his life. Something simple. Nothing that, you know, crazy. And uh, the problem is, though, he's, uh, uh he's... The joke was, you know, 30 minutes or less to get your pizza. In the One Piece world, it's 30 hours or less to get your pizza because he moves so slowly and he talks so slowly. So even if he was a pizza chef, which he isn't, but even if he was, then... You know, it's like, I would like, uh, you know, just a simple pizza. Just give me a large cheese pizza. Not even with anything on it. Just a cheese pizza. That's it. Mr. Four would be like, okay. Beep. 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 That'll be $12, sir. Okay, here's my card. You can go ahead and swipe it. Beep. Type in your PIN number. Beep, 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 beep. Okay, here's your receipt. I'm going to go get started on that pizza now. Taking the dough out. Like, it would literally take forever. Part of being in a restaurant industry or a bakery industry is you got to move fast, okay? Anybody that's worked in a restaurant industry, whether it be a five-star restaurant or something like a Red Lobster or even all the way down to like a McDonald's or a Burger King, you know speed is essential. You need to move quick, all right? People come in for lunch. They're hungry. I, I want a Whopper or I want like a dinner at Olive Garden or whatever. You got to move fast, okay? It doesn't matter if you're a waiter, if you're the hostess, if if you're a cook, if you're the baker, you gotta move quick, all right? And I'm sorry, Mr. Four, but you're just, you're, I'm putting you in garbage tier. I'm sorry. I don't want to wait freaking three hours for a croissant, <laughs> you know what I mean? So I'm sorry, garbage tier. All right, Bellamy is up next. Okay, Bellamy is a character in One Piece that has actually gone through a lot of development over the years, you know what I mean? He started out like an asshole. I would have put him, if this was Jaya Arc era Bellamy, I would have thrown him in garbage tier and called it a day. But Bellamy has changed ever since Dressrosa. He's learned about Doflamingo and how, like, how he was being used his entire life, essentially, and how misguided he was. He's become like a de facto member of the Grand Fleet. He went off to learn how to make flags for pirate crews, and he's going to make Luffy like the greatest flag ever. You know, that's what he's learning how to do right now. So it really, it shows initiative. It shows that right now he's... T tossing aside being a pirate, tossing aside Doflamingo's, you know, uh, you know, crew and everything in his industry, and he's going to try to be his own person, okay? And he's showing initiative at becoming a flag artist, okay? He's showing initiative there. So I think if Bellamy put his mind to it, he could be a really solid baker, you know what I mean? If he's just like, he just puts his, his nose to the grindstone and he puts his springs into action, I think he could make a pretty solid bakery. It's not going to be fantastic, it's not going to be the greatest bakery ever, but I think if Bellamy worked really hard at this, I think 
he could be a really good bakery. Uh, baker guy. Baker guy, yeah. Uh, really good or good? I'm kind of debating right now, actually, where to put him. Um, Cavendish is, is in good. Um, but, you know, what would... Well, okay, what would Bellamy's theme be is the thing. You know, I feel like he's been following Doflamingo for so long that he doesn't really know who he is himself. You know what I mean? That's kind of, He's kind of on, like, a self-discovery tour right now to learn about the kind of person, like, he even is to begin with. So, I don't know. Like, the decorations, I feel like his bakery would be pretty... Pretty, as he is right now in the story, pretty bland. Maybe flags from the flag island he's in right now, you know? I don't know. You know, I feel like Bellamy... You know what? I'm, I'm going to put him in really good. I feel like Bellamy... I think I think now that he's no longer part of Doflamingo's crew, I think he could do a pretty good job. All right, who's next? Bello Betty with the ability of the Cheer Cheer Fruit. Um, the devil fruit that doesn't really do anything for herself, but it actually bolsters everybody around Bello Betty to be, you know, uh, inspired and fight and everything like that. So I can see Bello Betty having, like, Revolution Donuts or Revolution Cookies or whatever, the Revolution Bakery or something like that. And you go in, and it's just like, you know, it's like, okay, you're going to make your own baked goods. And at first, you're going to be like, what? That's so stupid. Why would I make my own baked goods? I came here to make a... I, I came here to order food, not to make it. And then she uses the cheer cheer fruit, and you all get inspired. And it's like, you know what? Yeah, I can do this. I can make... You know what? You know what? I don't think she would be running a normal bakery. I think she would be running, like, a culinary school where you can order food, but she would be, like, the best teacher ever. Ever. You know what I mean? Because, like, you're like, oh, I don't know if I can be a baker. I don't know if I'm going to be good enough. And then you go into Bello Betty's uh, culinary school or whatever, and she's like, you can do this. I believe in you. And it's like, yeah, I can make that dough. Make the dough. You know, yeah. <laughs> Work with the, the, the rolling pin. Yeah, absolutely. And so, um, you, you know, you could come off the street and you can order stuff that the students, like, uh, of the baked goods are, are making and stuff like that. You could do that, but also she would be a great teacher, all right? So, a little bit of a different kind of style with Bello Betty, but so far, I, I think this is great, okay? So, um, yeah, I'm going to go with really good. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I Maybe amazing, because Bello Betty is not only making baked goods herself, she's also inspiring so many other people to go out there and start their own bakeries. So I think I'm going to go with amazing for Bello Betty. I think that works. Okay. Next up is Mr. Two Bon Clay, also known as Bentham. All right, so uh, right now Mr. Two is the queen of the uh, Kamabaka, not Kamabaka, the new Kama land, the new Kama land in level 5.5 .5 of, of Impel Down. And we've gotten to see level 5.5, .5, and level 5.5 .5 is pretty awesome, man. I mean, it's like a, a huge bar area and a stage, you know, and they're just having fun every single night. Um, so there's got to be some good baked goods there, right? Absolutely. So I think the style of it is is fantastic, you know? Uh, new Kama land looks amazing, and uh, you got the lights and the glamour and everything going on. Uh, Everybody's having fun. So, um, hmm. I would say, because Mr. Two has the ability of the Mane Mane no Mi, so he can transform into anybody else, but he doesn't gain the abilities of that person. So he could turn into the greatest bake. Like, he could, I mean, actually, ironically, the only straw hat, um, I guess, you know, not counting Brooke and Frankie and Robin, because, you know, they weren't uh, part of the crew at that point, but the only straw hat that um, he hasn't copied from the original crew when they first met them was uh, 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 Sanji, okay? And so Sanji... Even if Bon Clay could copy Sanji, that's not like he's going to get Sanji's baked abilities, like his baking abilities and stuff like that, his cooking skills, okay? That's not how it works. So, you know, I think Mr. Two would be a very, uh, a very okay baker, and with New Kama Land, I think it would look really cool. Um, but I think I'm just going to go with good. I think that's not bad there, and I'm still debating on Bellamy. I don't know. I think I'm going to push Bellamy down to good as well. I don't, I don't think he's going to be really good. I, I think Bellamy will be all right. He'll be pretty solid. I'm looking at the other people that are in the good category, and I think Bellamy kind of fits in there a little bit better. Okay. So, uh, yeah, this is more of a Bellamy divisiveness than anything else. All right. Who's next? Uh, Black Maria. Yeah, on the last one, I included Ulti and Who's Who. But I think those are the only two members of the Toby Ropo I included just to fill out the list. So this time I'm using the rest of the Toby Ropo. Okay. So Black Maria. Oh, Black Maria. Okay. She literally runs a, uh, like a brothel uh, on Onigashima called Women Trouble. 
And, uh, you know, she also has the whole thing where she traps men. She's, you know, in, in a spider in the web and everything like that. So she traps men in her web and forces them to be her, like, slaves. Uh, whatever context you want to look for in that, just go ahead with it. But they're like, oh, Black Maria, we love you. You know, it's like, it's that kind of thing, right? It's like, only for her, only for her. And, like, and you know, she's beating the crap out of Sanji with the brass knuckles and everything until he submits. So, um... It's, I mean, it's like a BDSM kind of situation, but hey, a lot of people are into that, you know what I mean? Okay, Black Maria literally is a giant woman who's also a spider that is into the BDSM kind of rough stuff, you know what I mean? There'd be a lot of dudes that would be into that, alright? I'm just saying right now. So, um, and she runs a brothel, which is like a bakery, also a brothel on the side. Like, it's like you go in for the, for the brothel but you stay for the baked goods. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's how it works. Sure, okay. I'm gonna go with maybe amazing. <laughs> I mean, like, I, I I think she would do a fantastic job. Okay, who's next? Who's next? Uh, Bluino is next. Okay, so Bluino actually, interesting. Bluino did run a bar. Uh, Bluino's bar on Water 7. He was the only one that didn't want to be a shipwright, I guess. You know, like Luchi and Kaku set themselves up as shipwrights. Um, I guess Khalifa was a secretary, and then Bluino just ended up with like, all right, I guess you guys work in the Galley Law, and next to Iceberg, I guess I'm just gonna go start a bar somewhere. Which makes sense, because if you're gonna be a, you know, a secret agent gathering intel, being the barkeep, I mean, that's the best job you can have. Um, but I imagine just like how Luchi and Kaku were really good at being shipwrights, you know, Blue and O was also really good at tending bar. He was a really good bartender. You ask him to make him make you a rare drink, he could probably do it. Now, that's being a bartender, though. Bartending ability and baking ability, not really the same thing. He knows a little bit about running a, you know, he knows about running a business, though. He knows about running a bar and all the stuff that involves there. So I would imagine maybe someday Bluno, if he was still working at the bar in Water 7, he'd be like, you know, one day he's there, you know, shining the glasses, and he's just like, you know what? I think we should start selling some delicious uh, baked goods here. We should get some croissants, some cream puffs. Maybe I could turn this into a breakfast joint. You know what I mean? Where I could have some waffles for the, the Galila people coming in in the morning before work. You know, maybe I could get, make them some, uh, some breakfast. You know, expand the clientele a little bit. So, yeah. He also has the door door fruit, which would make resupplying very easy. Um, you know, he would basically have access to a pocket dimension whenever he wanted. So, he, he could actually have a really small kind of area, but then he could have a pantry that's like an extra dimensional pantry. You know what I mean? So, that would be very convenient for a lot of things. Um, yeah, Blue Note, I think, would just be... I think he'd be good. I think he'd be solid. I think he'd be a really solid dude. He's a bartender first, a baker second, but I think we'll be all right there. Uh, then we have, uh, speaking of uh, uh, pocket dimensions and warping abilities, we have Charlotte Brule. Brule, yes. Okay, so um, her basis is kind of like the evil witch from, like, every single fairy tale ever. That's sort of the whole inspiration for Brule's character. Uh, the evil, ugly forest witch that's like, ha, ha, ha. Come here, my pretties! You know, that's that's literally her character. So, um, and, and she does have a softer side, though, so keep in mind. There's also references to Hansel and Gretel, where I think she tried to, like, uh, cook Chopper alive. You know, that kind of shit, right? So, I mean, like, it would be a fairy tale sort of aesthetic, but her, uh, her bakery would be in the mirror world. So you could literally enter it by, like, you just see a mirror on the side of the road, and it's, like, Brulee's bakery, and it's like, what's with this? And you just walk into the bakery, and you end up in the mirror world world. Um, now, you may end up never leaving. She may, like, keep you in there, like, locked in the basement or whatever, but, um, you know what I mean? Like, the baked goods I think would be good. I mean, you know, uh, going with the whole fairy tale aesthetic or whatever, she makes, like, a, a lovely little uh, a little pie, you know? Wasn't that the whole thing with Hansel and Gretel? Like, the witch was making a pie or something and was just like, alright, Hansel, Gretel, please get in the back of the furnace, please, and please help me cook this pie. Was that it? I don't remember reading Hansel and Gretel. I don't know if I actually even ever read the original. No, I did. That was a Grimm's Fairy Tales, right? If it was in Grimm's Fairy Tales, I did read it, but it was a very long time ago. Um, so, yeah, I mean, like, Brule, I, I mean, like, I think, like, okay. Also, she's a member of the Charlotte family. Every single member, and we didn't really go into this too much in the last video, because the only uh, member of the Charlotte family was uh, Big Mom. But um, every member of the Charlotte family has to know how to cook or bake 
something to some degree, right? Like, that's the whole premise of their crew is food-based names, food-based devil fruits, Big Mom always going on a hunger pang. Like, every single child of Big Mom has to know something to cook or something to bake with at least a good level of, uh, of adequacy, you know what I mean? So, of competency. So, I'm actually going to put Brulee on the really good category. She would be amazing if it wasn't that risk that you'll go into the mirror world and you'll just never leave, you know what I mean? That's how it goes. Uh, next up, we have Charlotte Cracker, um, who would specialize in, of course, biscuits and crackers. He would make his little cracker soldiers to like make the stuff in the oven i actually think that'd be a really cool aesthetic like you go into his bakery the whole thing is made out of from from floor to walls to ceiling to the counter to the tables to the chairs to the bathrooms to the toilets all of it is made out of his biscuit devil fruit ability um you can sing that uh the the magic pocket song from uh that that japanese like uh, lullaby song they sing um i think i can remember a little bit of it because i had to sing it when i did um Crackers video like two, three years ago, but I can sort of remember. It's like pocket tono naka newa biscuit toga hitotsu pocket tono tata kuto biscuit toga uh, uh, futatsu uh, mohitotsu tata kuto biscuit toga mitsu tara ite miru tabe biscuit toa fureru so no fushigina pocket toga hoshi e so no fushigina pocket tona hoshi e. I probably butchered that. It's been a while since I've had to sing that song, but I, I remembered more of it than I thought I would have. Okay, so there's like a whole magic pocket song thing that you can sing in, in Japanese, which is the basis for his Devil Fruit ability. Um, I think I think the way it looks would be fantastic. Now, Luffy personally did not like biscuits. Like, by the end of the fight, Luffy was like engorged on biscuits, which means they were good. It's just that he's like, oh... I'm so full. I'm so sick of biscuits. I've been eating nothing but crackers for like the last 12 hours. I'm full. And also, Cracker can generate jam as well. He can not just make the crackers. He can mold them into whatever shape he wants, and he can add jam to them as well. So, I mean, like, I, I think I'm going to put Cracker up here with Katakuri, guys. Like, I'm serious. They're both sweet commanders, but that's not the reason. I mean, like, both of their... I, I think, honestly... Cracker would enjoy doing the bakery with crackers and biscuits just like uh, Katakuri would with donuts. I think he would genuinely love his job because he's a, a biscuit artisan. He even called himself that. He's an artisan, all right? So he loves his work, okay? He sits around all day whenever he's not working or, you know, fighting against the like, invaders into Totland. He's sitting around perfecting his bakery skills, okay? So, yeah, I think I think uh, Cracker should definitely be the best. Um... Then we have uh, Pedro Spero. I'll be honest with you, this dude always creeped me out. This guy with the tongue, oh my god. Now, here's the thing, he has the, the Lick Lick fruit, oh my god. But he also has the ability to make candy with it. But here's the thing, um, candy is not a baked good. Like, it just isn't. You know, lollipops, he can make lollipops, he can make gumdrops, he can make... Like, anything involving, like, candy, like the sugar, like, uh, not starch, uh, syrup. Candy. He, he, would, gr he would make a great, um, I, I don't know if I would go to his candy store, but uh, he would have a candy store that I'm sure would do okay. But um, in terms of a bakery, I think he's just fallen flat on his face here. You know, I think, uh, I think you're going to have to rip his arm off or something. I mean, I'm going to give him an eh. I mean, honestly, like, like just by virtue of him being a member of the Charlotte family, sure, he might know how to roll some dough or something like that, but that is clearly not his expertise. Also, he has that giant tongue. He's always going to be, like, licking, and, like, saliva is going to be everywhere. You know, like, you go up to the counter to order something, and he's like, okay, and then he's walking away, and the tongue is just dragging on the side of the counter, like, ugh. Like, ugh. Okay, I'm, you know what? Just keep my money. I'm just going to leave. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah, I'm putting him in eh. All right. Uh, who's next? Uh, Charlotte Pudding. Okay, Pudding. I mean, she's named after Pudding, which is also not a baked good. But she did show her bakery prowess when, you know, during the climax of the Whole Cake Island arc when Sanji and Chiffon and Pudding worked together to make the cake. Um, I believe it was Chiffon that made the Chiffon cake, like the actual baked cake itself. And then um, Sanji made the cream. And then what did Pudding do? 
I can't actually remember what she, what part of that she, like, did she make the chocolate icing or something? I mean, she definitely has skills at being a baker, so she's going to rank higher than Paro Sparrow, obviously. Um, I don't think she deserves to be in the best category, though. I'm going to put her in the amazing category. Uh, I think... It was mainly Sanji that, re like, resulted in the cake that was, like, so amazing. Big Mom, like, passed out. Okay, like, 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 of sheer, of, like, elation heading to the next world of flavor. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna chalk that mainly up to Sanji as, like, 60, maybe 70%. And then maybe Chiffon was, like, a remaining, like, maybe if, like, Sanji is 60% of that, Chiffon and Pudding together are, like, the remaining 40. Something like that. I mean, Sanji was the majority of the reason why that cake was so damn good. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, I mean, pudding, I'm sure, you know, she made a good chocolate icing or whatever. I can't remember for the life of me what part of the cake making process she was involved with. But anyway, uh, who's next? Smoothie. All right. So smoothie, another sweet commander, but I don't think she's going to be up there with Katakuri and Cracker just because her specialty is not uh, baked goods like donuts or, or biscuits. Her specialty is smoothies. So, like, she literally can take any object, like, she can literally make juice out of a stone. She can take a rock and then twist it and make juice out of that. But juice is not a baked good, you know what I mean? So, I'm gonna knock uh, Smoothie down to the really good category. Yeah, yeah, we just don't know. I mean, like, I'm sure she could make... Um, okay, well, she does, she does have two sisters... One of her sisters is named after eggs, because she looks like an egg, and her other sister is Cinnamon. Uh, Cinnamon? Cinnamon. Cinnamon, there we go. Who is actually my favorite of the, the triplets, uh, out of Smoothie uh, and Cinnamon and the uh, the other lady that was like, uh, not Tama, but she was named after an egg. Um, I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to go with Cinnamon there, but like... Maybe so for that reason, because, like, you know, eggs and then cinnamon, those are ingredients for baking. But, you know, smoothie has the fruit that just juices everything, you know what I mean? So it's like, I don't know. Like, I, well, okay, well, honestly, think about this. She could take a cake. Like, somebody else could make the cake. She could take the cake and then juice the cake, wring out the cake, and then you could drink the juice of the cake. Now, that sounds, like, disgusting, but you got to keep in mind, like, she literally extracts, like, the true essence of whatever she's, like, wringing out, and it makes it very flavorful. She, at the tea party, she juiced a, a giraffe. This is sounding very weird, but, like, there was a giraffe there, and then she wrung out the giraffe and then gave the drink to, like, the lords of the underworld, and they, like, like, like Stussy, like, took a drink of it. And she was like, oh, this is magnificent. You know, so that's like, you think like wringing out a giraffe, it would just taste like blood or giraffe. You know what I mean? But it's like, uh, it was like a fine champagne. It was like a fine Chardonnay or like a really high quality beverage. So if, if somebody else makes a cake and then she wrings out the cake, it would taste like probably a very sweet sort of like soda. So it would be, a, you're really stretching the limits of what a bakery is. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I don't know. I think I'm just going to keep her in the really good category, I guess, because, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, okay. Uh, who's up next? Uh, Mr. One, Daz Bones. All right, so Daz Bones, uh, he's a bounty hunter by trade, and then he worked for Baroque Works as their strongest agent right behind uh, Mr. Zero, Crocodile, and he's like his right-hand man. Uh, he was also in level 4 Impel Down for a little while, so he's uh, being used to working around heat, definitely. Uh, he also has the Supa Supa Nomi, which allows him to turn his body into various knives and, uh, you know, knives and stabbing weapons. So, um, I think, like, Mr. One would have, like, pretty much, well, here's the thing, like, you use knives in baking, but not as much as in cooking, you know what I mean? Like, over here, we have, like, you know, some, I have various spoons we have wooden spoons, we have a spatula, which by the way, in terms of spatulas, okay, I was always told my entire life, this is a spatula, right here, you know, this is a spatula, because of Spongebob, right, so this is a spatula, but then I was later told that that's actually not a spatula, this is a spatula, you know, it's like the, the, the plastic or rubber spatula that you use for like frosting a cake, this is called a spatula, and if you look on Wikipedia, if you just go on Wikipedia and type in spatula, this is what you get, you don't get this, but then I looked it up, it's like, okay, well, what's this called, and it's like, it's called a turner but then i search for that and that doesn't exist so what i think is the case i think these are both considered spatulas but like one is like a spatula for baking and one is a spatula for more like cooking there's a three-pronged spatula that's for like fish you know so it's like different 
I guess, context. Like, this is for baking. This is a spatula for cooking, like SpongeBob uses to fry cook or whatever. But my point is, like, you don't really need super ridiculously sharp, like, butcher knives and meat cleavers and the stuff that Mr. One could make when you're making cookies. Um, it does come in handy when you're making fudge. Like, when my mom makes her peanut butter fudge and she has the tray of fudge, she has to take, like, a sharp sort of implement and, like, cut the fudge. So, like, in that instance, let's say Mr. One makes fudge. All right, so he's sitting around making fudge and he cuts the fudge up using his own body. That would be pretty efficient. Like, he could just take a finger and just, like, cut the fudge up, you know, really easily. Um, so that's fine. Let's say Mr. One makes great peanut butter fudge. Awesome. Uh, fantastic. Uh, but I don't think he would be, like, really high up there. So I'm just going to put him in the good category, okay? So, and, uh, you know, his, his bakery would probably look like, maybe it would look like an Old West saloon or something. Kind of like the Spider Cafe. You walk in, there's, like, bounty posters on the wall and everything like that. I mean, it is clean. It just gives the appearance of an Old West saloon. It's got, like, a, a piano in the in the corner that, like, plays itself. Or maybe somebody can sit down and play the piano. Like, I, I could see Mr. One, like, running, like, a saloon kind of type situation. I can actually see him and uh, Zala, who's Mrs. Doublefinger, his partner, working together there. So I might actually put Zala right there alongside Mr. One. Where, well, actually, you know what? Okay, you know what? I can actually see this situation going down. I could see Zala, Mr. Uh, not Miss, uh, Mrs. Doublefinger, um, Paula, working as the boss of the, the, the Spider Cafe. All right, so she's the boss. She'll be up here in the really good category, and she can cook. And then her husband, Mr. One, in this universe that we've created for ourselves, is the cook or the baker, okay? Um, but it's like she's like a, like, like a little bit higher than he is. Let's go with that. Sure, why not? Okay. And we knocked out two there for the price of one, so awesome. Who's next? Uh, Denjiro. Okay. I would say Dinjiro is the most competent out of all of the scabbards. I think he's the strongest out of all the scabbards. I think in terms of, like, tactics and, like, planning, he is the most skilled at that. But he also dedicated 20 years of his life just to pure revenge for Orochi, you know what I mean? So it's like, hmm, tough one. You know, if he could take that much dedication and, and after now Orochi... Orochi's dead, so what else is what else is Denjiro going to do with his time? All that time that he spent devoted to just rage and revenge, there's now a void to fill. So I think unless he wants to go crazy, he has to fill that void with something, and I think it's going to be baking. I think he's going to start a bakery, ladies and gentlemen, and he's going to take all that raw rage and everything, and he's going to translate it to making fluffy cream puffs. And, uh, and some strudels and some, and some tarts and all that, all that good stuff, right? Some danishes that are going to be so fluffy. The bread's going to be so delicious. Um, I think Denjiro, out of just being the most competent out of all of the scabbards, I'm going to put him in the amazing category. Yeah, let's go with that. Uh, Drophy, or Mrs. Merry Christmas, or Miss Groundhog Day, if you remember the four kids dub. Uh, so the exact opposite of Mr. Four, she does everything super, super, super fast. Which, as we said, is very vital for a restaurant setting. So I can actually picture Mrs. Merry Christmas as like a line cook at like a Waffle House or something, right? You ever been into a Waffle House? Yeah, it can get kind of insane. We've only been, I've only been to a Waffle House twice when we went down to North Carolina last year to visit my uncle. Um, one time we went in, it was in, the, it was in the, uh, the morning and it wasn't really that busy. And the other time we were in there, it was a little bit later in the, in the day and it was like kind of really busy. And so, but I could see Mrs. Merry Christmas behind, like in that little section, like behind, like you can look into the kitchen. And she's like, okay, okay, okay. We have like three orders for waffles, blueberries. We have pancakes over there. Okay, move that, move that over there. Okay, we want bacon at table three. No, I said table three, not table two. Get it over there, table three. And you know what? though i mean like she would be the boss of the waffle house she would be the manager you know what i mean and be like you know there's a karen that walks in actually there was because my mom is named karen uh <laughs> okay i gotta tell you a fun little story we go and sit down at the uh at the waffle house right and i can't oh man this was a year ago so i can't remember she, my mom ordered the blueberry waffles and i can't remember if they served the waffles with the blueberries in the waffle or the blueberries on top of the waffle but regardless, my mother sort of had a moment where I, I think they served the blueberries on top of the waffle. And I think my mom wanted them to be actual blueberry, like, baked into the waffles. And I remember my mom said that, like, oh, I thought the blueberries would be part of the waffle. 
And she, she didn't have a Karen moment where she was going to like, I want to talk to your manager. It wasn't that. But let's assume that it, it was for this scenario. And so it's like, it's like Mrs. Uh, Merry Christmas walks over. It's like, oh, are you complaining about my Waffle House? Are you complaining about my blueberries? You know, and just like, you want to get out of here right now. I don't need you in this Waffle House. Get the hell out of here. She would just talk the shit. Anybody that complained, they, she would just like unload. You know what I mean? And they would just be like, they wouldn't be able to get a word in edgewise. They would just be gone. You know what I mean? So she would be kind of the manager that would sort of have your back. You know what I mean? Like if um if a customer was being rude to one of the waitresses or something like that, Mrs. Merry Christmas would be like, oh, we're not having any of that shit around here in my Waffle House. You get out of here right now. You don't harass my workers, you know, and just like, oh, okay. I'm like, oh, you get out of here right now. You know, it's like, I think she would be a great Waffle House manager. <laughs> I really do. So let's put her up there in really good category. I think she would be great. You know, meanwhile, Mr. Four's all the way down here in garbage category. All right, who's up next? Ivankov. Okay. Ivankov, um, you know what? Ivankov is based off of Tim Curry's character, uh, Dr. Frankenfurter from Rocky Horror Picture Show, which is, by the way, one of my favorite musicals of all time. Go check it out. Science fiction double feature, my favorite song. Uh, my favorite song, the version in the movie is really good, but the version, there was a rock remix version of that song done by a band called Me First and the Gimme Gimmies. That is my favorite song of all time. Science fiction double feature by Me First and the Gimme Gimmies. But the version in the, in the musical and the movie is also very, very good as well. But anyway, yeah. So I'm imagining it's going to be like a castle theme. So if you've ever seen the aesthetic of Rocky Horror Picture Show, that is the layout of kind of New Kama Land, but also that would be the layout of Yvonne Cobb's Bakery. So already... Very top-level stuff, and we're going to have, like, nightly musical numbers. You're going to walk in and order your food, and it's going to be like the time warp again is in the background and all that kind of jazz. You know, Meatloaf might make a surprise appearance on a motorcycle. If you haven't seen Rocky Horror Picture Show, this makes no sense for you out of context. But you know what? I'm going to move that up here to amazing. <laughs> just, like, just, like, trust me on this. It'll be fantastic, okay? All right. So what's up next? Foxy. Okay, Foxy, 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 Foxy. Oh my god, okay. I had to include him on the list at some point, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Okay. Here's my logic here. Foxy would not want to run a bakery. Foxy's whole thing is like going around cheating pirate crews out of their strongest members with the Davy back fight where he cheats constantly. You know what I mean? Foxy is the kind of dude that's just like, I don't, I, I want to do this like the duplicitous way. You know, I'm not going to do this fair and square. I'm going to do this my, my way. I'm going to, you know, cheat the system as much as I can possibly. Okay. So I don't know, man. I could see him like, I'm on the cusp between garbage and unholy, honestly, because it's like, I could see him starting a bakery, but like him hating the clientele and hating the customers and just like pulling pranks on them constantly. Like you bite into a donut and it like explodes or something in your face, you know, because he's not happy doing it. He doesn't want to be there. You know what I mean? Uh, plus, he has the slow, slow beam, so he'd be messing with you and everything. Like, he's like, Foxy, we have a rush today. And he would just walk out and be like, slow, slow beam. And then like everybody in the bakery would just slow down. And so that, I guess that gives them more time to get the orders out, but you're also, like, messing with the space-time continuum around the customers. I don't think the customers would enjoy that very often, very much. Tell you what, Foxy, I, I don't even know how the hell you managed to avoid the unholy category, but I, I, I think garbage tier is okay for you, all right? I mean, I really want to put him in unholy. You don't understand how much I want to put him down here. But you know, you know what I mean? This isn't, I have to put bias aside. This isn't my least favorite One Piece character tier list. You know, this is, of course, how they would do at a bakery. I don't think Foxy would do very well. I don't think he would be happy there. I don't think he would want to be doing his bakery stuff. But if he was in that situation, he would just go ahead with it. It would be a crappy bakery. Let's just leave it at that. All right, who's next? Uh, Fukuro. Uh, Fukuru or Fukuro. Was it Fukuro or Fukuru? I can't remember, but he was an owl. Who? Okay. Fukuru who? Okay. Um. He, um. I don't know, man. Like, I'm really just thinking of eh for Fukuru. I really can't think of any part of the story. Like, he's a secret agent. He wasn't even working undercover at Water 7, so you can't even say, like, he has a skill in that regard. He's just, uh. He's just a secret agent. He's just a big rotund guy. Um, he does have the access to that Doraki ability, though, that uh, Teawase thing where he could do the contest 
where if you kick him, he can determine your physical strength. But I don't think that works for, like, baking ability. I don't think he can measure your baking skills. It's just, like, how strong your physical attacks are, and that's it. You know what I mean? So, um, that's not really helpful. Uh, he doesn't have a Devil Fruit. He's got the six powers, but how how could you... Out, out of the six powers, out of all of those, how could you translate those to baking abilities? Like... Soru, I mean, you can run fast, but, you know, I mean, I guess in a bakery you can run back and forth to do stuff, but I, I guess that could be useful. Geppo's not going to be really useful unless you have, like, a multiple-leveled bakery. Uh, Ronkyaku, I don't think Ronkyaku's going to be that useful. Just use a damn knife. Soru would be cool. Like, you, uh, not Soru, uh, Shigon, the finger pistol. That'd be cool. Like, you take a bunch of donuts and you're like, Shigon, 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 and, like, knocking out the holes of the donuts. That, that would be useful. Tech Eye wouldn't really be useful at all. Maybe, I guess, kneading the dough. Like, you take the dough and, like, Tech Eye! And then you, like, knead the dough with your iron body. Yeah, I'm missing one. Kamie, the paper body thing. I don't think the paper body would be really all that useful. Yeah, I think I'm just going to put Fukuru and, uh, eh, category. Uh, who's next? Uh, Galdino, Mr. Three. All right, so Mr. Three is an artist. He actually has a really good, a good, good eye for art and everything like that. Uh, when he made the giant uh, cake thing with the pumpkin on top of it that was spinning. Uh, you know, it was made of wax, but that's good. So, no, I mean, I could make the joke that his baked goods would all have wax in them, but no, he wouldn't do that. But the bakery would be made out of wax, and for that reason, it would probably have to be in a relatively cool sort of climate, because if it was somewhere really hot, then it... Well, no, actually, he built a wax house on Little Garden, which was, like, super tropical, and that wax house stayed there. So in order to melt the wax, it has to get really, really hot. Just being a little humid, like 80 degrees outside and humid in the jungle, that's not enough to melt the wax house because it was there for months after that. You know, after Little Garden, Mr. Five, Miss Valentine, and Miss Golden Week lived there on Little Garden for a few weeks or months before they finally left, okay? So the wax house was fine. So it has to be like several hundred degrees before it actually melts, okay? So it would be fine anywhere. He could make a giant mansion. He could make the chairs. He could redesign it however he wanted. He could literally have a different design for his bakery every single day. He could just reconfigure it at will, you know? So that would actually be really good. So Galdino is getting some really good points for interior decoration right now. Um, how would he treat his employees? I think... Okay, I guess. I mean, he treated Mrs. Golden Week really well. They were a good team. They got along. Um, you know, he has a very specific kind of, like, like only artists could work here. Like, the starving artists or, like, you're an art major at the local university or something. You could work there. And, like, he, he could, like, create the wax uh, castle, but it's all made of wax, so it hasn't been painted yet. So that's why Miss Golden Week or, like, other artists would paint the stuff. I, I honestly think now he would care way more about aesthetic than the actual baked goods themselves. I think this is a, an example of, you know, like, the place would look amazing, it would look incredible, but the baked goods would really fall short. So I'll tell you what, like, if the baked goods were amazing, plus the interior decoration, I would probably put him all the way up here in the best. Uh, but I don't think that's going to be the case. So I think that's going to knock him down to amazing category. All right? Just, like, even if you were, like, okay... Like, let's say you go to, like, I don't know, uh, a gas station and get a donut or something, right? Like, it's a, it's a gas station donut. It still tastes fine. It's just not that amazing, right? But now, imagine you're eating that gas station donut in a beautiful palace, you know, with a chandelier and a fountain. And everything looks, like, super cool. Like, the chairs all have these cool designs on them. Like, you're sitting there like... Like, the place where you eat the food does add a sort of layer to it, you know what I mean? So, I'll keep him in amazing. Next up, we have Mr. Five, Gem of the Border. Also, the explosive puns work very good for him as well. Um, the thing is, though, like, wouldn't he make, like, donuts and stuff that would blow up, you know? Like, because his, he, it was actually mentioned when he ate uh, one of Usopp's, uh, you know, exploding stars, he's like... It's not very flavorful. You didn't use good quality gunpowder. So he would probably actually, Mr. Five might be an unholy just because if he's making uh, dough and making like baked goods, he might be making it for his tastes, which means that he would be using gunpowder and like various explosives inside of his baked goods. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like, like kind of, right? Because that's like his, like, like, catering to his taste, you know? Um, 
Yeah, and even if even if he doesn't, like if he even like his breath is explosive. We've seen this before. His snot is explosive. His his spit is explosive. So even if he is making regular cookies or regular cakes or whatever, if he messes up and a little bit of his spit or his snot or he is, maybe he's like in the kitchen, he's a little sad, his tear, like a tear or a hair, his hair is explosive. If a hair, one hair falls into that cookie and he bakes it and he gives it to you and you're like, okay, it's going to be like a damn firecracker going off in your mouth, okay? The risk is too high. I have to put him in on holy because this could literally kill you. You know what I mean? This could literally kill you even if he's not intentionally trying to. You know what I mean? This would be very dangerous. Mm. Some of his spit gets in the cookie. It's like a free, it's like nitroglycerin. It's just like, it's like, yeah, not fun. Okay. Who's next? Dr. Hogback. Um, kind of like the same thing with Moria. Hogback would make undead servants kind of do the cooking and baking for him. I don't see Hogback sitting around. Like, he's a mad scientist, you know what I mean? He's into, like, that kind of stuff. Honestly, oh, man, I could see his, uh... I okay, I could see his bakery sort of being, like, a mad scientist laboratory, similar to Caesar. Uh, but would he... Well, he's... Oh, wait, he also, like vivisects people, right? Like, he does a lot of autopsies. He seems like the kind of messed up doctor that would, like, you know, knock you out, and then, like, you'd wake up and your kidney's gone. Yeah, I think he needs to be in the same category as Caesar. Now we're getting into the unholy category. We'll, we'll put Hog back right there next to Caesar. Um, you know, many people were actually saying that Caesar Clown, like, he could actually make some really good, like, chemically amazing, you know, brownies and stuff because, you know, he's, he's gas gas fruit. Like, he's a chemist and stuff. But the thing is, like, I think you're overlooking the fact of how sadistic Caesar is. Like, he would drug you and then drag you into the back room to perform weird operations and gases on you and stuff like that. Like, that's what he would be doing. And I think Hogback is the same way. You know, so the unholy category is in a situation where the food's not great and it can also, like, literally kill you. Okay, so, yeah, that's, that's, that's about right. Uh, who's next? Inu Arashi. Um, so a problem with the minx is, like I said, hair. You know, like, if you're cooking and baking and you're a dog, there's a reason why you can't have a dog in the kitchen while you're baking. There's a reason why there's health codes, you know what I mean? Like, my mom... She loves baking, and everyone around, like, she sells her fudge, like, Christmas time, she gets a bunch of orders, everybody around here loves my mom's world-famous fudge. It seriously is incredible, okay? And here's the thing, though, she wanted to sell it. She wanted to open a business up and start selling it at one point. She was, like, looking into this, but they're like, okay, well, if you do that, you can't have an animal living in the house where you're preparing all this food. So you would have to have a separate kitchen, a separate building, something where pets are not in, like cats or dogs. You can't have that, right? And so we had a dog at the time. We've always had dogs. We've had a beagle and we had a, a, a boxer named Duchess. And so that's the reason my mom could never, like, actually open a business properly where she's selling fudge, you know? So, you know, we can't have, you know, dogs and stuff in the kitchen, not for nothing, but, you know, they scratch and they get, you know, Ino Arashi's back there cooking food and then he's, like, gets a scratch behind his ear and he's, like, you know, how dogs scratch and then it gets hair everywhere and dander and... Like, I, I'm sorry. Like, I'm, I'm sorry, Inu Arashi. And Nekamamushi, you're going to be in the same category here. I'm sorry. Carrot's not on this list, but she would fall in the same category as well. Like, I, I don't know here. I, I don't know. Like, but then also you got to remember there's like in Japan, there's like cat cafes and dog cafes. But even in that situation, like if you go to a cat cafe in Japan, I don't think the cats are like in the kitchen, sitting on the, the work surface as you're kneading the dough. There's a cat, like, laying on the flour, like, rolling around in it as you're kneading the dough. You know, you go to a cat cafe, the cats are in, like, the area where the customers eat, and it's like, oh, look at the kitty cats. I've also seen uh, owl cafes where there's, like, little owls that are hanging out. But once again, the owls are probably not in the kitchen, you know, pooping everywhere as the food is being prepared. You know what I mean? So, um... Uh... I, I, okay, I'm sure the food would be good. It's just you would occasionally get dog hair and cat hair in it. I'll put it in good. Um, 
you know, that just for that, I, I really feel bad about putting them like, cause they can't help it. They're minks. They, it's just not maybe a career path that's perfect, but you know, whatever. And if it's, if it's other minks eating there, I don't think the other minks would care because there's clearly like restaurants and bakeries on Zoe. You know what I mean? So I don't think they would mind, but like an average person coming in and I order a croissant and it's covered in cat hair. I'd be like, <sighs> All right, oh, there's some cat hair. Oh my god! You ever like that? That's what. By the way, that is one of the worst sensations ever. Like when you go to a restaurant and you order a you order a meal and you take a bite of a burger and you can taste, you can feel there's a hair in your mouth. Like, and then you reach in and it's like like six inches long. Like, oh oh ew 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 ew. Like that's like the worst sensation, right? So. I'll keep them in good, but yeah. Um, who's next? Uh, Izo. Izo is next. Okay, Izo, um, uh, skilled in the school of dance uh, from a young age alongside Okiku, uh, who is, yeah, Okiku's on here as well. So uh, honestly, I think I might put Kiku and uh, Izo together wherever they end up. I, I, I think like a uh, brother-sister duo working together, that would actually be really cool as like an, an aesthetic, you know what I mean? Like working together, kind of like that. So, um, huh. We put Denjiro in Amazing, and I think that's going to be the highest rank of any of the Scabbards. Maybe Con, uh, not Con, not Conjuro. I, I was like, Conjuro, Wamatsu? <laughs> it's just like, not, not, maybe Kawamatsu, and I have a reason for Kawamatsu. We'll get to him in, when we get to him. But, um, I think on like like really they don't really have any baking skill. Well, no, no, no. Okiku worked at the tea house. Okay, okay. Well, okay. Izo's dead right now. Shit. All right. All right. Okay. Let's assume Izo did not die. All right. Let's say let's say Ashura Doji and Izo did not die during Wano, and now they survived the Battle of Onigashima, and they're going to start a bakery. Okay. Awesome. In the new Wano. All right. Ashura Doji is going to start his bakery in the in the Curry region. And Izo and Okiku are going to start their bakery in uh, Ringo or something like that, right? So Okiku uh, did some training at the uh, the tea house working with uh, Suru, Kinemon's wife. So I imagine she picked up some stuff there. And so after the war is over, Okiku's going to go over to Izo and be like, brother, why don't we go start a tea house or, you know, a bakery? Like, it's a tea house that sells tea, but also baked goods and stuff like that. Dango, which is like a dessert, uh, you know, and stuff like that. And I, I, I could see that being really good. I'm going to put them in really good. I'm going to put Izo and Okiku up here in the really good category. They open a nice little tea house in the snowy region of Ringo where a traveler in the winter could open up and it's nice and warm and comfortable and there's a fireplace, a little furnace in there. You could walk in and you can drink some nice warm tea and you can have some uh, Mitarashi Dango, maybe a, a bowl of Oshiruko. And it's like, so it's not all baked goods, but there's baked goods on the menu. And uh, just a nice, like the, uh, like a nice uh, mochi meal with the tea. You know, like we talked about that, like Daifuku is usually eaten alongside the tea. Um, so yeah, we could have that. Actually, let me tell you a story about that. So when I was at uh, university, um, it's not there anymore, unfortunately, but there was a little coffee house on campus where it was like in the back of one of the dorms. So you go into the back of one of the dormitories and then down into the basement and there was a door there and there was this tiny little coffee shop on campus and it had carpeting and nice comfy couches and recliners and an electric uh, fireplace, but it had like an electric, like the fire, but it's not, a, it's not a real fireplace, but it's there. And you could just go in there and order coffee and work on your assignments and have little baked goods. And there was also this giant window Window that faced into this uh, field on campus and in the winter it was such a nice experience because it's freezing outside Pennsylvania winters are really harsh you'd be like a foot of snow outside you'd be freezing your ass off you'd walk into this coffee shop take off your jacket get a nice cup of coffee get a get a scone oh my god the college made so many amazing cinnamon scones I'm actually kind of craving them uh, ever since I left there but anyway you just sit down on this couch pull out your laptop get to work on an assignment or write, write a paper or something you're sitting there drinking your coffee eating this cinnamon scone fireplace there and you're just waiting witnessing the snow falling in this giant window and uh, they actually they uh, renovated the whole building so it's not even there anymore uh, they changed it into basically like now it's just like a little area like 
where you go in and it's like tiled floor and chairs. There's no couches. There's no carpeting. They took all the comfort out of it. And now it's just like a, a regular little mini cafeteria where you eat. It's still the same coffee and still the same scones, but it's like they took all the, the, the coffee house vibe out from it. And it, it's just, I hate that. But um, yeah, that's that's basically what I'm imagining Izo and Okiku's uh, uh, tea shop would be like. You know, just you sit there and watch the snow fall on a on a really bad weather kind of day, and it's just really really peaceful. You know what I mean? Uh, R.I.P. Izo. Okay, and I guess I guess Okiku could still run it. So there you go. Um, Jabra, 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 Jabra. Man, I'm noticing a lot of the CP. I, I think I'm just putting a lot of the CP9 members down here in eh. You know what I mean? Well, I did put Lucci up here just because, like, no one is going to argue with Lucci. You know what I mean? That's the reason I put Lucci so high is because you walk in and Lucci, I think Lucci, he's like, he's not like he doesn't care about, like, cleanliness or whatever, right? He dresses very impeccably. He has a sense of style. So you walk in and he'd be like there, like, cleaning a glass or whatever and be like, you know, what, uh, what do I have here? Uh, I, I'd like, uh, some bagels, please, and he gives you a, a bagel or whatever. I mean, you wouldn't complain, but I don't know. I don't think the food's gonna be all that great, and the aesthetic, I don't think, is gonna be that amazing. I mean, at least with Lucci, you might have, like, well, all of the CP9 members have an animal theme. Lucci's is a, uh, a jaguar cheetah. Wait. Leopard. Yeah. Lucci's a leopard. Fukuru is a owl. Jabra's a wolf. Yeah. I don't know. I'm gonna keep them in eh. Uh, who's next? Oh, Jack! Jack. Jack. Um, Jack is a fish man, so you have a little bit of a fish man uh, underwater sort of vibe in there. So maybe like mermaids painted on the walls or something. I don't know. That'd be cool. Uh, but Jack is like this really imposing dude, though. And he's kind of an asshole to even his own like subordinates. He, like, he didn't really seem to care very much about them during Zoe. So it's like you walk in and there's just like a super big imposing muscle guy that's like, What do you want? Uh, I, I, it's my son's birthday party. I want to order some cupcakes. Cupcakes! We don't make no damn cupcakes in here. I'm like, okay, I'm sorry, sir. You know, it's like, I don't know. I don't think it would be a very fun place to work. I don't think it would be very... It'd be weird if, like, the aesthetic was, like, underwater, like it looked very family-friendly, but then Jack walks out and you're just like, What are you kids doing? Get the hell out of my store! You know, like, that'd be, that'd be funny. But I, I don't think, uh, yeah... Would it be garbage, though? Eh. <laughs> I think it would just be eh. Yeah. Uh, Jozu. Uh, Diamond Jozu. Um, Vanguard unit on Whitebeard's crew. I mean, it's not like he would turn the... It's not like he would turn the... The baker... The baked goods into diamonds. You know, he can't do that with his fruit. Um, I mean, you could have sort of like... I, I, this is going to be a weird thing, but you could sort of do, like, a jewelry store mixed with a bakery. Hey, it's never been done before, but hey, man, that's how some of the greatest businesses start. You know, you got to think outside the box here, you know what I mean? So, Jozu's like, I'm going to be a fine jeweler, I'm going to appraise diamonds, but also there's brownies while you wait. <laughs> I, I think he would... Good. Good, I guess. It'd be like, I yes, madam, uh, I would like uh, I, I would like the finest uh, diamond, please. A diamond necklace. And Jozu would be like, okay. And he gives you the diamond necklace, and he's just like, he's wearing a suit and tie like he's a fancy jeweler. He has that thing in his eye that he uses to, like, measure the quality of diamonds. But then also he's like, ma'am, would you also like a chocolate chip cookie? He's like, I would love one. How fancy, how high class, you know, but I think it would just be good. I mean, the cookies would be an afterthought. The main focus would be the jewelry store, you know what I mean? Okay. Uh, we're actually making decent progress here. How long have we been filming? Only about an hour. So now that I have a good handle on how to rank these bakeries, you know, I, I think that we're going to move through these a lot quicker. Okay. Next up is Kaku. Okay, you know what? Out of all of the members of CP9, I don't know what it is. I think Kaku would be the best baker, honestly. Maybe even better than Luchi. I don't know. I just have a vibe that Kaku is is not really happy in the line of work that he's in and that he would really prefer to do something else. Like, we sort of got that vibe that he was... Remember after Zoro defeated him and Zoro said, Oh, by the way, I got a message for you from your boss. He says you're fired. And then Kaku's like, Oh, Polly, huh? <laughs> Ugh, oh, that's a shame. 
it's sort of implied that he he wanted to get out of the the game. He didn't want to be a, 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 an agent anymore. And you don't really feel that with any of the other CP9 agents. Like, Lucci's very happy being an assassin. You know what I mean? Like, he likes to do that. Uh, Jabra, same way. And they have carnivorous zones, so it makes sense. Meanwhile, Kaku has a, uh, a, a zone that's more herbivorous, right? I mean, I don't think giraffes eat meat, so he's a herbivore. So it makes sense he would be a little bit more sensitive. After he ate his fruit, he didn't turn into, like, a crazy blood-soaked maniac, kind of like Lucci is. So I think Kaku might be the best one. And, uh, well, actually, no, Califa as well. But I might, you know what, hmm, I might do this. Hmm, how do you feel about that with the CP9 agents? Kaku is really good. Kalifa is just good alongside Luchi. And then Fukuru and Jabra down there and eh. I mean, I guess, like, they're assassins, you know what I mean? They're not, like, they're, they're, they don't really, they're not good at, making dough i guess i don't know like if they were okay if they had a job where they had to go in and pretend to be bakers for like four years like they pretended to be shipwrights i guess they'd be pretty good at it they wouldn't be well i don't know well okay you can't they're not the same thing because being a shipwright that's a lot of manual labor right there and they were already physically strong they were already superhuman so they adapted really well as being uh shipwrights because that's a very labor-intensive job, and they were already superhuman. So that's why they were doing so well there. If this was ranking the CP9 agents based on their shipwright-building skills, like, Kaku would be up here, Luchi would be up here, you know what I mean? But that's not what we're doing. So with that being said, I think I'm just going to keep with this this standing right here. Okay. Uh, who's next? Karasu! Karasu. He speaks very lonely. But he has the... Um, the microphone, the audio speaker thing that Lindbergh made for him, which adds a little bit more volume. Um, you know what? His would be a very edgy cafe. His would be the coffee house where a bunch of edgy people that are fans of, like, Edgar Allan Poe would, like, go on Saturday nights to read their emo poetry. That would be Karasu's Bakery. It would be, like, it would just be called, like, I don't know, the, um... Uh, I'm, I'm trying to think of a good, a, a, what's a very kind of like, not hippie, but sort of like early 90s, sort of like hipster before hipster sort of name for like uh, a coffee house, like the, the crying crow. Oh, actually, you know what? I have the perfect one. Karasu opens a coffee shop somewhere in a snowy region, like in Ringo, or like in our world, maybe like Canada. And it's called The Crow in the Snow. Yeah, right? Yeah, you can feel that, right? You can feel that, right? So you walk in to this coffee shop on a Friday night. You walk into Crow in the Snow. And it's all black on the inside, just lit by those like like those industrial lights like you would see in like a railroad, but they're like adapted for like a restaurant. So it looks like a kind of a grunge sort of feel. I'm getting like a early 90s grunge kind of vibe from this sort of, but also very edgy emo poetry. So you walk in, there's like crows. Maybe there's like a pet crow, like Karasu has a pet crow or he can turn into crows. So there's just crows sitting around watching you, uh, but it's like a cool vibe to it. You know, there's like nine inch nails playing in the background or something or like smashing pumpkins or something. Uh, no, nine inch nails, nine inch nails, definitely. And uh, there's like just like there's a little stage with like a little spotlight, but even the spotlight is kind of dim where you'd sit up there and you just read like your poetry that you wrote the previous day or something. And then, you know, Karasu's there wearing a suit and tie, very fancy. And there's baked goods. You can go and sit down and drink some coffee and eat a scone or something. And then uh, there's, like, quotes from Edgar Allan Poe all over the place. You know, like, all of his poems and stuff is just on the wall. Like, he was such a tragic soul. Like, the raven, of course. Like, there's just a whole big thing of the raven. Like, the entire poem is on the wall behind the bar or something. Or uh, across from where... Maybe, not, maybe it's not a bar, but it's, like, coffee shop or whatever. It's like, and the raven ever flitting, still is sitting, still is sitting, perched on the bust of Pallast on top of my chamber door, and his eyes have all the seeming of a demon that is dreaming, and the lamplight o'er him streaming throws his shadow on the floor, and my soul from out that shadow that lies floating on the floor shall be lifted nevermore. You know, that, that, that kind of stuff in the background. That's what we're talking about, okay? So, um, 
I have a story I want to tell you guys really quick about that name, though, because I did not come up with that name on my own. But give me a second here. Karasu, you know what? Amazing. Amazing. I would love to go to Crow in the Snow. Okay. I got to tell you a story here, okay? About 12 years ago, I want to say, I was still in high school. My dad, uh, my mom and dad divorced, and my dad was living in a bunch of different apartments, okay? There was one apartment my dad ended up living in, which is just, to be completely, to say nicely, it was a crack house. Like, it was a really, really shitty apartment. Um, you just walk into the lobby, and it was, like, falling apart, and it was very dirty, and it's just, like, you get the impression that, like, there is somebody doing meth or crack or making meth or something in this. Like, it's kind of an unsafe sort of apartment building, okay? Well, anyway, my dad, one day I was down there with him, and he's like, hey, I need you to help me move some boxes out of the attic. You know, I guess as part of his uh, lease for work, for living there, they gave him, like, the upstairs attic room, okay? So my dad's, like, he, he opens this old rickety door, and there's, like, these old wooden stairs that go up to the, the attic of this building. So I'm walking up to the top of this place, right? So now we're on the roof of, like, this three-story crack house, basically. And uh, there's this tiny, tiny little room. I mean, very small. And it's hot as hell. Like, there's no air conditioning up here. This was in the middle of the summer. Very hot up there. There was one window, and that was it. One window, and then, a, like, a little light bulb, and then that was it, okay? So we go up there to get my dad's stuff that he once moved. But then I look on the wall. One of the walls of this room had a mural and a whole paragraph. Like, somebody had painted a crow in the snow and, like, an actual crow in the snow on the wall, and there was this huge paragraph on the wall. And I, I took a picture of the paragraph and what it said, and it was on my old cell phone, and I was looking for it, but I couldn't find it a few years ago, and I'm like, damn it, I can't believe I lost this, and I'm not going back in that building again, you know what I mean? My dad doesn't live there anymore. He only lived there for a few months. But, like, uh, this paragraph was basically, like, this band that used to practice in this room, this, this, this tiny little room that had no air conditioning, no heat, and it's like this paragraph was like, we're crow in the snow from February of 2003 to the summer of 2005. We practiced every week in this room, this hot as hell room. We sweated in this room and we froze our asses off in this room. All for the music, man, all for the music. If you're reading this and we got big, just know this is where it all began. If you're reading this and we don't know, you don't know anything about us, well then I guess just have a good laugh but never forget us. I remember that's what it said. I remember that's what it said. I wish I still had the picture of this mural so I could show it to you. I really do. But let me just be known, a crow in the snow did not become, that's not like it, they're not on the top 500 charts, so I don't think they did really good. You know what I mean? I don't think they really took off, okay? And this was back in like 2004, 2005, and I was reading this in like 2010 or something, so I don't think they were successful at that point. I think they probably broke up. But I remember Crow in the Snow, all right? If anybody's watching this that is a former band member of Crow in the Snow, be like, holy shit, Teching found the mural! Never forget Crow in the Snow! It is immortalized in Karasu's really edgy goth <laughs> bakery. There you go. There you go. All right, so yeah. All right, I'll never forget Crow in the Snow. I don't know what their music was like. I don't know if they ever sold an album or a CD or where they played at or who they were, but or any of the names of the people in the band. But I know that they practiced in the attic of a meth of a meth house in a town in central Pennsylvania. That's what I know. That's what I know. Mm. Who's next? We have, oh, Kawamatsu. Okay, Kawamatsu, I think I'm going to put in the same rank as Denjiro. And the reason why is because he's a Kappa. He's not a Kappa, he's a fish man. But I feel like everybody would love to go to his area. It would be like an indoor water park. You know, it'd be like you go in and there's like an area. It's separate from the bakery. Like you go in and you can order food and everything and you can have like baked goods and everything. But then like there's another area where it's like an indoor water park where you can like hang out and stuff. And it's Kappa themed. It's like feudal Japan Kappa aesthetic of a water park. You know, it's like that. So I, I think I think him and he could also do like sumo matches. Like there would be another room where he does sumo. So once again, like 
like, you go to do a sumo match, and then, like, because Kappas love sumo, and uh, you could, like, order snacks to enjoy the sumo. So I, I think the aesthetic of this, a sumo-themed, in uh, you know, sumo-themed indoor water park bakery, I think would work amazing for Kawamatsu. All right, so we're keeping it with that. Absolutely. All right, so next up is Kinemon. Kinemon, uh, I mean, he is the master of 4D chess, as we all know. I think I'm just going to put him in the... Where did I put Ashura Doji? I put him in eh. I think Kinemon would just be an eh, too. Like, he's not... You know, I mean, like, Zoro's in there, too, so it kind of works. Like, all the swordsmen are just in the eh category. <laughs> it's just like, if you're a swordsman, you're just eh. You know what I mean? There you go. Uh, King. King. All right. Um... You know what? King would have a hard time opening a bakery because the world government's always trying to, like, you know, arrest him and everything for being a Lunarian. So that's probably going to be difficult for King. Uh, but he also has the BDSM thing going on. So maybe in the same tier as Black Maria? I don't know. Um, I don't think he would be in an amazing category. Um... You know, he could heat everything up himself, though, with his own abilities. I mean, he doesn't even need to have an oven. It, that could add, like, a little bit of an idea. Like, you know how hibachi is so good because you go to hibachi and you're actually watching them cook it in front of you, and there's, like, a whole show a aspect to it? That would sort of be like with King, where King would, like, make the donuts, like, right in front of you. Like, he would cook them in front of you, and he would, like, use the right amount of, of fire to make them, and he would just do all that right there. And it's like, oh, wow, that's so cool. Like, Baked Alaska, you know, Baked Alaska, where it's, like, the top of it's actually lit on fire? You know, that would be something he would probably specialize in. So, I don't know if King would be in the amazing category, but I'll put him down in the really good category. You know, I think he would make some pretty good stuff, you know? And I don't think... I also get the impression he's not happy being a pirate. He would rather probably be doing something else. Um, he's forced to be a pirate because of the world government chasing after him his whole life. You know what I mean? I think King wants to do a different kind of, you know, adventure. Uh, who's next? Kumadori! I mean, Kumadori could use his hair to, like, knead the dough. But then you kind of have the same problem as the minks, and you're getting hair into everything. Like, if somebody was using their hair to make me, like, a pizza dough or, like, a cake or biscuits or something, I'd be like, ew. You know what I mean? I'd be like, no, don't do that, you know? Um, although I would say, you know what, I'll put him in the same rank as Khalifa. Because down here, I feel like Fukuro and Jabra, well, okay, you know what? No, okay, okay. I'm moving Fukuro up to good. Because if we're going to go with the animal-themed cafes... Fukuro's would be an owl cafe, which would be a which would be adorable because you'd have little owls everywhere, like whoo. And then Kumadori's would be like a Japanese kabuki theater kind of thing, you know. So that would be cool. And then he would serve like traditional feudal Japanese pastries, like dango and such. And then you have Khalifa, who I just think is I think also is just going to be really. I mean, she has the sex appeal. I mean, what can I say, you know? So there you go. Um, and then you have uh, Jabra. Well, Jabra could have like a puppy cafe. He could have like little doggies. You know what? All of the CP9 agents are getting a promotion. There you go. They're all going to be good. Yeah. Okay, but how... Okay, but Khalifa's sex appeal, though. <laughs> hmm. Let me move Luchi down here so they're kind of all together. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. I think, I think I'm going to go with this. I think I'm going to go with this. Okay. Luchi can have the cat cafe. Kumadori could have the feudal Japan aspect. Fukuro can be the owl cafe. And Jabra could be the puppy cafe. It's just the food isn't going to be that amazing. But it's cool because you go to a cat cafe, not necessarily because the food is amazing, but because it's like little kitty cats that you can, like, pet and hang out with, right? Like, that's the whole point. Kaku is just, I think he's just going to be a better baker. And then Khalifa has the sex appeal. So there we go. Okay, okay, there we go. Yeah, there we are. All right. What's next? Uh, oh, Conjuro. <laughs> Garbage. Conjuro would make... Food. And it was stated that you can eat the food that he makes, but it always gives you a stomach ache. Maybe he should be an unholy then. You know? Because he's a traitor. He's very duplicitous. And he makes food that gives you severe stomach pain. Yeah, screw it. Conjuro belongs in unholy. Uh, who's next? Lindbergh. Okay, okay. Lindbergh is a mink. So you would assume Lindbergh would go right here, right? But. But. Think about this for a moment, okay? Steampunk kitty cat that invents all these crazy, wacky inventions. I think Lindbergh would be able to would be able to make an invention 
where he could not get hair into his, like, I think he could make some kind of thing where it's like the food will be sanitary, you know what I mean? Neko and Inu, they're not scientists. Lindbergh is a damn scientist. He's making freeze guns and shit, okay? He could figure out some way so that cat hair does not get into the croissant, all right? So I'm gonna put Lindbergh up here in the really good category just by him being a steampunk cat that is just like, you just go to the, you just go to the bakery just to see him. Just to be like, woo, Lindbergh, steampunk kitty cat, yeah, you know, like, honestly, 100%, you could buy his inventions, he might also sell you the wacky inventions on the wall or whatever, like, yeah, that might be an option, yeah, cool, yeah, he was like, he, the kids would come in and he would give them, like, little, like, little mini freeze guns or whatever to play with, yeah, sure, yeah, really good, really good, Lindbergh, absolutely, uh, who's next, we have, um, oh, Miss Golden Week, Marianne, Okay, I was actually thinking about this one. She could just use the colors trap at the entrance. Like, she could literally just, like, you walk in, and she just paints the colors trap on you. So it's like you're, like, super, like, no matter, like, like no matter what the food quality is, it's you're going to love it because you're basically being hypnotized into loving it. Okay? She can literally paint, like, whatever color was, like, there was, like, laugh laughter yellow, sadness blue, uh, betrayal black, uh, anger red. There's probably some combination like purple happiness or something. There's probably some ha combination she could make that just puts you in an amazingly good mood. And no matter what you eat, you can eat the most bland pastry ever, but it would make you so like, oh my god, this is so good. So, like, just because, like, you know, just because, like, she's hypnotizing you, it's kind of a cheat, but, like, I think you would, I mean, also, she's an artist, so the whole place would look really nice. It would look beautiful. You'd walk in and see, like, the greatest works of, like, Picasso and Rembrandt, and, like, Michelangelo's David would be, like, painted, like, on the ceiling. Like, it would be some really good quality stuff, like, like Van Gogh and everything. It would look amazing, and you would be, and you would love it because you would be hypnotized into loving the pastries, you know what I mean? Like, that's, sure, okay. Uh, Miss Valentine, actually, her dream is to become a uh, chocolate lady, where she, she always dresses in lemons, but she actually wanted to be, like, chocolate lady, which I guess that means she would be a baker, I guess. So, uh, just by her, that like, that's her dream, like, that's what she wants, and, and, and her dream was realized during uh, the Meet Baroque cover series. Um, I, I guess that I like, I like chocolate. Chocolate's really good on, like, chocolate croissants, chocolate pie, chocolate cake, chocolate brownies. Chocolate's pretty much good on everything. I'll, I'll put Miss Valentine in amazing. Like, if she's just dedicated to her new career and just makes chocolate and fudge and everything, sure, I think she would be amazing. Uh, Dragon. <laughs> I don't have time to be running a bakery. I'm the leader of the Revolutionary Army. I'm Monkey D. Dragon. I'm also maybe Batman. Joker, you're going down. Im Sama, you're going down. Oh, God. <laughs> we gotta have a drink here. Mm. Alright, guys, where's Dragon going? He's the leader of the Revolutionary Army, but does that mean he makes a decent cookie? Uh, <laughs> does he bake a good cookie? How's his tart game? Does he make good tarts? I don't know. Um, His devil fruit allows him to manipulate the weather, so... Even if it's, like, a shitty day outside, like, rainy and cold, like, there's just, like, there's, there's just an area, like, a one-mile radius around his bakery is always perfect weather. Never snows, never rains, never cold, never too hot, perfect, nice springtime temperature wherever his bakery is. So just by that alone, I, I, people would go to the bakery just to enjoy that. Like, can you imagine, imagine if... It's like you're living in some place that's freezing cold. It's the dead of the winter. It's negative 10 degrees outside. There's two feet of snow outside. Ice and snow, just miserable. But there's one place you can go where there's like a, like, let, let's say like there's, yeah, let's, let's say there's like a one mile radius, a one or a two mile radius where just it's super, it's always like infinitely springtime. You know, or infinitely fall with the, the leaves always being orange or always being warm out, always being nice to just like sit outside on the veranda and just enjoy a meal. Like, ah, that's nice. You know, that provides a service that Dragon's the only one that can bring that. You know what I mean? So, but the food, though. 
I don't think the food would matter in this context. Like, I really don't. I think you would just go to this bakery to sit down and like, all right, I'm going to have this crappy cookie, but I get to enjoy a nice sunny day in the middle of February. Sign me up. You know, like, screw it. I'm putting him in an amazing, you know? Ah, really good. Really good, really good, really good. The weather can only get you so far, I guess. It's a good, it's a major bonus. Like, if the weather wasn't an aspect, like, if Dragon could not control the weather, he would probably be down here with Luffy, all right? So he's up here pretty high, all right? Next up is Morley. Okay, Morley. Uh, she has the power of the push-push fruit. Uh, so maybe, like, an underground sort of idea where you could, like, walk up to the bakery and there's, like, a sign, and then there's just, like, a tunnel but the tunnel is, like, well-lit. It's not, like, claustrophobia. It's, like, a big tunnel. I was watching this thing about a dude that made, uh, like, an underground sort of, like, uh, fallout shelter. But it was, like, like five stories, and it was, like, super cool, you know? So maybe something like that. Like, you walk down this tunnel, and you're, like, underground in a cave, and it's got, like, crystals and stuff all over the place, and it looks really cool. And Morley um, has designed, like, the area, like, the counter is, like, shaped out of the earth and all the chairs and stuff. I mean, there's cushions there, too, so you're not just sitting on dirt and rocks but like the push push pr pu the push push fruit allows her to pretty much reshape it into whatever she wants so you know what i mean so yeah yeah i can see that and there's like different levels where you could go down further and like different like rooms and stuff and kind of the same thing with galdino uh where morley could change the layout of the bakery you know whenever at her whim like whatever you know so i actually might just put morley in the same category as galdino so where's Galdino? Where did I put Galdino again? Galdino was, yeah, in amazing. Yeah. I I think so. Yeah. Um, who's next? Uh page one. Uh, okay, where is the lowest ranked Toby Ropo on this list? Uh Old T is really good. Black Maria was in amazing. Who's who was in really good? Because the cat cafe. The cat cafe will really get you. Oh, but wait, wait a second, wait a second. Who's Who has a cat cafe. So does so does Lucci, though. And they're both assassins, so it doesn't make any sense for them to be in separate categories. Okay, either Who's Who's going down or Lucci's going up. Who's Who's going down? Who's Who's going down? Okay, there we go. Just for consistency, okay? Um, page one, though. Uh, I don't think there's any... I, I honestly think page one would just be eh. Honestly, I think he would just... On, I don't think he would be mean. I think he would try his best. I think he would just be eh at trying his best. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just, yeah. Uh, Perona. Ghost girl Perona. Uh, so she has the ghost that can make you feel extremely negative, which would not help. Uh, but also, does she have a ghost that makes you feel really happy and joyful? Because if she had that ability, that would be different. That would be up there with Mrs. Uh, Golden Week. But um, Perona doesn't have that ability that we know of. But she still has, like, the goth sort of aesthetic. So I think I'm going to put Perona right up there next to Karasu, kind of. Because they both have the same sort of vibe going on. It's just that Karasu's will be more edgy for guys, and Perona's will be more goth for, like, girls. You know what I mean? Like, it's that kind of aesthetic. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Let's go with that. Sure. Uh, Perona plus, like, the ghosts would, like, deliver the food to your table and stuff. Like, what on? And we've seen that she can cook pretty well. She made those delicious little peanut butter and jam sandwiches for Mihawk. It was so adorable. I think she would be an amazing baker. Perona's, Perona ranks up pretty high there. Um, let's see. We have Queen. Zuma, 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 Zuma. Um, see, here's the thing, though. Queen also likes to... Queen loves Oshiruko, which isn't a baked good. Uh, it's a dessert, which not all desserts are baked goods. Mmm... Queen makes viruses that, like, can kill you and turn you into, like, not even kill you. Queen makes viruses that turn you into, like, the worst monstrosities ever, and then they kill you. Like, slowly. So, I think Queen has to go into unholy category for that reason. You know what I mean? Like, Queen would, like, I would not trust going to a bakery run by Queen. I'd be like, is this going to turn me into a damn mummy? Is this going to turn me into a, like, is this going to turn, is this going to cause severe necrosis on my flesh? And then I turn into, like, a, uh, like a zombie. Like, I have leprosy. Like, my arm starts falling off. You know, it's like, I, I would not feel comfortable eating in Queen's uh, Bakery. No. Rizo. Oh, boy. A ninja-themed 
bakery. Yes. Yes. The best. Yes. <laughs> no, seriously, think about it. First of all, every Naruto nerd is going to be eating there. Everybody that loves Naruto is going to be there. He's going to have uh, the staff dressed up as Naruto characters. Raizo's going to be jumping around. He's going to be performing Shadow Clone Jutsu. He's going to be making some great food, ninja-themed food. Like, it comes with, like, a kunai knife inside. Like, you order a scone, it comes with, like, a little plastic kunai knife in the, in the scone. Oh, my God. It would be the greatest themed ever. It would be a very limited, like, a niche sort of clientele for the weebs of the world. Um... But you know what? I think I think Rizo would make it work, okay? Rizo man, the best, absolutely. Oh, but I said the scabbards Denjiro has to have. Ugh. You know what? You know what? Uh, mm, okay. All right. Yeah, okay. We'll keep it with that. I'm happy with Denjiro and Rizo being on top together. That's okay. Um all right, so who's next? Uh, Sabo! Um, I think Sabo's Bakery would be really good, you know? Sabo's Bakery would be pretty, pretty good. Um, so is it really good or just good? There's, I have to decide on that. <sighs> Where did I put Vivi? I just feel like Sabo should be in the same category Vivi's in. I don't know why I immediately went with that. I just feel like they should. They're both royalty. Um... That's pretty much the only similarities they have. Um, but, like, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm happy with that. Sure, okay. Uh, Sasaki. Eh. Once again, Sasaki is, like, the least developed out of the members of the Toby Ropo. He can turn into a dinosaur, which is cool, I guess. So, like, Drake, well... He can turn into a freaking Triceratops helicopter. <sighs> This is tough. I feel like Drake should be at the top, though, because Drake has a dinosaur-themed bakery, but it's the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Well, he's an Allosaur, but it's the T-Rex. Hmm. Huh, this is tough. No, go over here. Okay. Hmm. Should all dinosaur-themed bakeries just... Well, Ulti is a dinosaur, and she's... Okay, you know what? Page one, you're going to go one rank below Ulti. So, you're going to go into good. Sasaki, I'll put you in really good, just because you're a... Like, I'm going to go to the bakery to see the Triceratops floating around like a helicopter, delivering me my food. You know what I mean? Like, he's a pretty bland character, but should I punish him just because he's being a bland character? Like... The blandness kind of helps him because that way I can sort of be like, well, maybe he's a really good baker and we just never knew because Oda never expanded more on his character. You know what I mean? Okay, we're good with that. Let's go with that. Sure, all right. Man, this, this tier list is getting big. It's, it's already expanding past, past its earthly limits. All right, Shiki is next. Uh, Golden Lion Shiki. Uh, he's got swords for legs. Broke out of Impaled Down. He can make things float. Um, I think that would be really good. Really good, because he would, like, you know, he would make things... Actually, maybe amazing, because there's certain baking techniques that maybe, like, high-altitude cooking, but he can literally, like, use baking techniques where he's, like, has the roll, like, he puts the cinnamon rolls in the oven, but then they're floating in the oven so that they receive even baking on all sides. You know, it would be the most evenly cooked baked goods ever, you know, because it wouldn't be sitting on a tray or whatever. He'd be baking them floating constantly different different directions so he would be inventing a whole new style of cooking of baking um i think shiki would be pretty high up there yeah, yeah absolutely uh also everything in the restaurant would be floating around it'd be pretty fun you sit on a seat and the seat could float the kids come in and he's just like lifting the kids up into the air like floating around be like yeah i'm flying you know what i mean like yeah he can't make other people float but he could like make an object float and you could grab the object and you can float around or whatever. I think it'd be a really fun bakery. Everything would just be flying around. It'd be fun. Uh, Shinobu. Uh, let's see Shinobu. Um, well, she could use her devil fruit to mature things immediately. So like, I don't know. I mean, like she could literally like by that logic, like if there's certain things that, okay, when you're making dough, 
like you gotta wait for things to rise and ferment and stuff like that for like the yeast to take effect and for it to rise and stuff. You have, you have to wait like an hour and a half or something for yeast to rise when you're making. When I make my bread, when I make rolls, I have to wait like an hour or so. So using the mature fruit, she could probably just skip all those steps. Or she could just be like, okay, here's the dough, and then just activate the devil fruit for an hour and just, okay, dough is rised, and now it's like cooking the oven. She's like, I guess you wouldn't have to. Well, it's not time acceleration. It's just aging something, okay? So I don't think it would work. Like, she would still have to wait for the rolls to cook in the oven. But um, she could get it to the point where she doesn't have to wait around for things to rise or, like, the yeast to ferment or anything. Like, she could have that, like, right away. Um, yeah. So I'll put Shinobu in um, good. Okay. Uh, Shiryu. Shiryu's Bakery. Shiryu... If you, if you made fun of his baked goods, he would probably kill you. But so many other people, like, so would Moria, so would Kaido, so would Krieg, so would Morgan. I think Shiryu just belongs right there, honestly. Yeah, that's about right. Um, Spondum. Hmm. I think garbage, too. <laughs> I think garbage for Spondum as well. Spondum is like, you would say Spondum would be the manager and other people would work under him. But the whole point of Spondum is he's not even a good manager. He sucks at being the commander of CP9. So he'd be the incompetent manager that would just yell at you to do things, but would never tell you how to do them correctly. And then when you mess them up, he would blame you. So garbage, piece of shit, owner and manager right there is Spondum. All right, we only have two left. I'm actually going to take care of Wapple first, because I think he's also going to be really easy. <laughs> Wapple is, I think, going in garbage tier. Really easy. Um, same thing with Spondum. I think Spondum and Wapple would get along really well, where he'd be like, it's like, make me my dinner, and be like, you messed it up, and be like, it was your fault. You know what I mean? Like, he would do that kind of shit. Now, he has the power of the Baku Baku Nomi, so he can eat anything. Uh, but I, I think for that reason, like, I, I just don't think he would be able to keep a bakery, because whatever building he makes... He's just probably going to get hungry and devour it. It's like, we made a bakery. It's the grand opening of Wapple's Bakery. Om, om, om. He would just always eat it. Like, Wapple, sir, please quit eating the bakery. I'm like, I don't care. I'm hungry. You know, so I, I think Wapple is a recipe for disaster. Also, isn't the whole premise of the Baku Baku no me is you're constantly hungry no matter what? So that means that you're always hungry and you're working in a bakery. Yeah, he would be eating the... It would be like Jory Bonnie, right? Yeah, I guess. But Wapple is just more of a dick than Jory Bonnie. So, you know, he's going lower than her. But yeah. All right. Finally, though, we have Stroysen. Now, Stroysen is interesting because he was the head chef at Whole Cake Island in Whole Cake Chateau. Big Mom's personal head chef for at least 50, 60 years. You know, um, not 60 years because Big Mom is only 68. So at least for 50-something years, you know, since they met when Big Mom was like six, okay? Uh, or 60 years. I suck at math. He's been, like, he was Big Mom's, like, first companion that she ever encountered. You know what I mean? Um, also might be the father of Pero Sparrow, but that's another story. Um, so Stroysen, he might actually be a contender for the very best that no one ever was. Can I actually... Can I get Stroysen up there? I'm going to have to work him up the level here. Oh, no. Where did Stroysen go? Okay, he's there. All right. Stroysen is either going to be the very best that no one ever was, and we're going to have to downgrade Sanji, or we could put Sanji here, and we could keep Stroysen as the best. But, like, the first row of the best. Like, because it would be... Like, if we're talking about characters in the story just based on their baking skills alone, top three would be Sanji, Stroysen, and Zeph. I think it would be a contest between Zeff and Stroysen, but Stroysen's also in his, his older age, which means he has more experience, but also means he's just, he's in his 90s, ladies and gentlemen. He's an old guy. All right, he's probably not going to live much longer. And Sanji is, is I think, I think Sanji might actually hedge out above him a little bit. And because here's the thing, I'm sure the cake that Stroysen made was amazing. It was incredible. And Big Mom would have loved it. But the, the cake that Big Mom ate that Sanji made and Chiffon and Pudding, it sent her to another dimension in flavor. It literally started a musical number inside of her own head. You know what I mean? Stroysen, I'm sure, had a really crazy cake, amazing cake. But I don't think it would have been quite on the level of Sanji's. 
So I'm going to put Stroyzen on the very first of the best there. And Sanji is still the very best that no one ever was. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. We have completed round two of the best bakery in the One Piece world. There's a few on here I'm not 100% sure on. So let me know in the comments down below, of course. Um, maybe next time. I, I, I think I can only really do one more of these. Uh, I want to get, like, some... I don't, I don't even think I'm going to have 56 people in the next one. Uh, I think I'm going to have Roger, Rayleigh, Marco for certain. Um, mm, I can't really think of... I mean, like, let me know some other characters. That's what you guys can do. Comment some other characters down there that you would like to see on the Best Bakery in One Piece list that I haven't included yet. Uh, Dadan, I don't have Dadan on here. You know, so there's still some characters, but I don't think there's another 56 that I could include. Um, filler characters could work too. I mean, I guess that's fine as well. Uh, they're all One Piece characters. So yeah, this is where we're standing at right now. Uh, it, it gets more complex each and every time. <laughs> but um, hey, man, this is why we're here. This is why we're here, to figure this out. We got to rank these bakeries, man. We have to. Because all these One Piece characters, what are they going to do after the story's over? They're going to have to start a bakery. That's the only viable career path for them. So uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, and uh, signing out. I'll see you back here for part three in another three months. I'll see you back here uh, in uh, November. I'll see you around here around Thanksgiving. So, yeah, see ya. Teching signing out.